uh, ubiquitous but often maligned French press. So we've got the French press, we've got our scale, it's zeroed out, we've got 25 grams of coffee, add it, make sure it says 25, tear the scale, what I'm going to do is pour 350 grams of water on that. I'm really not going to worry too much about the pour, I'm not going to try and get circles, I'm not going to try and do anything exotic, I just want to make sure all the coffee gets wet and I want to make sure that it gets wet uh, and saturated pretty much as fast as possible. I'm going to pour all the way to 350 grams, just like all the other systems. Started my timer. All right. Took about 15 seconds. So at 350 grams, I'm going to take my system gently off the scale. I'm just going to put the lid and the filter back on the top. And I'm doing that so I can retain the heat. So I'm not going to lose too much heat. I'm going to let the system brew for four minutes. So. What makes the French press, I think, um, somewhat desirable is that you don't need a lot of pieces to brew a cup of coffee. What makes it, I think, a little abused is that what people do when you get to the four minute mark or that people think this is a cup of tea and what they do once they set it up, they go take a shower or they go do a load of laundry. This is not tea. Brewing coffee is more like baking than cooking. All these sort of uh, numbers and times and temps, there's a lot of precision and a lot of thought that, that you should do and you should be managing your clock, you should be managing your water temp and your masses. So we're approaching three and a half minutes. So I've had a really, really verbose kind of conversation there. So you can do a lot of stuff, but you should be around what you're brewing here. You should be aware of your time and what's going on. The other thing we need to do is when we plunge, because we need to push the grinds back, you want to do it in a way that's not going to over agitate the coffee. So you're going to slowly push down the plunger and you're not going to push it all the way. You don't want to wring out your coffee like you're wringing your rag. And then four minutes, you're done. You decant the whole volume of coffee. You don't leave it in there, this is not a server. You don't leave the coffee sit in there with the ground coffee, and that's it. This is not the brewing and serving vessel, this is the brewing vessel, this is the serving vessel. Because if you leave it in there longer than four minutes, what you're gonna do is you're gonna continue extracting from the surface of this coffee. You're gonna over extract your cup. You're gonna get a bitter cup. You're gonna get a less desirable cup. One, one other thing uh, I think it's an uh, important note here compared to other brewing methods and other brewing styles is that the cup that the French press produces is considered muddier or potentially more muddled. You can see maybe a little bit from this how cloudy this looks, how it looks like maybe it came from a, a river or something. It's not as clean and clarified. So what it does visually for the cup, it's also going to do for the palate. It's going to produce a less clarified cup, a muddier cup, or what I'll say is a muddled cup. The notes are going to be more commingled. They're not going to be as bright. They're not going to be as clean. They're not going to be as identifiable. However, the body of the cup is going to be much fuller in the palate, much bigger than say a V60 or a Chemex. Now, this is pretty simple in that, uh, you know, everything you need, they sell you in the French press. I think the cleanup is a little bit more complicated. So you actually are going to have to get the ground coffee out. You're going to have to get it off your filter. So that's going to take a minute. So if you have a busy morning, you know, this may sit. This may be something you come home to. I think that's less desirable. There are other methods that brew in a similar sort of immersive style that I think are a little bit cleaner and also a little cheaper and possibly uh, a, a little more accessible. Um, this thing that I just grabbed is called a Clever. It's made of plastic. You can get them for under $20. But what's neat about this is it has a paper filter. So this is your system. What you do, it's almost like a tea steeper. What you do, you put your paper filter in there. And again, just like with any brewing system that we've talked about so far, you want to rinse your filter. You want to get that paper taste out. So you can see I'm pouring this in, but nothing's coming out. There's a little mechanical stopper in the bottom. So until you set this on a cup, nothing's going to come out. So you want to rinse your filter, get the paper taste out. 
Then what you do, again, you want to do everything on the scale because you want to manage your masses, the mass of the coffee and the mass of your water. You put your coffee grinds in and then you pour your mass of water in, just like we did with the French press. But when you're all done with your system, then what you do is you put your lid on it and you just let it sit there and you let it steep. Again, four minutes is pretty good. The one thing about the four minute rule on this device that I would violate is that what happens is, and I'll try and do a little demonstration here with what we've already brewed, but what happens here is when you have the coffee in there, and you have the grinds in there, and you're gonna put it on a vessel and you're gonna do the drawdown, the coffee has to go through the grinds in the filter here. And so that's actually, if you wait four minutes, then that coffee is gonna be contacting, or the water is gonna be contacting the coffee longer than four minutes. So on this one, you wanna manage the clock a little differently, and you probably wanna put it on your serving vessel at like 3.30. So that means you might have to slightly change your particle size, make it a little finer. But once you're done brewing, then the beauty of this device is, you just take your filter with your grinds out, just like on the other brewing systems, and you put it in your compost pile, you rinse this out, and you're all ready to go for the next time. So there's, there's a couple advantages of this, cost and cleanup.